Hey, I'm Christy Friesen, and guess what? I'm here at the Cool Tools studio, and we're making all kinds of nifty things. And guess what we're gonna make right now? We're gonna use polymer clay and a mold to create an interesting little design, and then we're gonna make it come alive with pan pastels. Pan pastels are amazing. All powders are amazing on your polymer clay. Get them all. But if you haven't yet used pan pastels, I'm gonna show you why it's gonna become your next addiction. All right, so here's how pan pastels come. They come in these fun little pans, and they're nice, uh, nice little lid. They're very easy to travel with. And the reason why they're kind of amazing is that there's some kind of a binder in them. So it makes them really creamy, really opaque, and they love to grab onto polymer clay. They love grabbing on a lot of things, but they especially love unbaked polymer clay. So we have this mold, and we made this amazing impression of the little lotus flower and it's still wet. I haven't baked it. Pastels have to go onto the wet clay. Now I use both my finger and a brush, but we're gonna start with a brush. And I just want you to see how delicious this is. So I'm grabbing a little of this. The reason that these things are nicer than some of the other pastels, and I use them all, is that because of that little binder that's inside it, it's almost like a cross between an oil pastel and a chalk pastel. It's kind of grabby without being clumpy. Isn't that nice? like a good mascara. All right, so I'm gonna put some blue in there. Now let's come back with this fuchsia kind of color. And this is another thing that makes them wonderful is look how well they blend. So when you've put down one color, it doesn't matter because that second color is just gonna go right over the top and make it even more happy and exciting. Now let's bring this color down in here. Don't worry, it looks a little sloppy, but I have a plan, trust me. So I'm gonna come with this darker purple all in this area. Woo, look at how exciting that is. Now I'm gonna just wipe my brush. I usually have a, a little towel somewhere close by so that I can get excess off my brush and keep blending. Now if there's a lot of extra surface powder, I tend to push that off because that's not gonna grab. That's just gonna always lay on the surface and you're gonna not have that as a part of your piece. So make sure you've kind of shoved it in there. All right, so I'm seeing some pink, I'm seeing some blue, I'm liking that. Let's go to my greens now. I don't know if Lotus has green in the inside, but this one does. I'm gonna come in with my brighter greens. I lay down a base of this more oh, peachy toothpaste, pinky, not really pink, it's a greenish color. Lay that down first, then the other greens can just pop right on top of that. And I add my nuance of color. All right, so there we go. Now, I've got lots of color all over the surface, okay? Nice and messy. What are we gonna do with this? Oh, let me show you. Through the magic of tape, just good old scotch tape, clear tape, I'm gonna lay it over the surface and I'm gonna rub this nice unbaked polymer clay and start lifting off excess. And this is a great way of letting the, whatever that base polymer color was show through and taking away anything that got a little out of control. You're gonna need a lot of tape because you really wanna get rid of stuff. And once that powder goes on the tape, it doesn't really want any more powder. But look at the nuance you get. It's almost like antiquing, only you don't have to wait for the piece to dry and use your paint. You can do it right away, immediate gratification, which in my opinion is the best kind of gratification. So we're just gonna rub and lift and rub and lift. And look at that. There is all the detail being shown again because we've taken away some of that gook that you wondered, was it gonna look any good? Look at how good that is. Then you just look over the whole piece and decide, is there anything else you wanna do? Do you wanna take a smaller brush and maybe hit just a bit more purples in some of the outer edges, give them a little bit more pop? You can do that. Just a tiny touch here and there according to what you wanna do. There we go, last little bit of green in there. And now you have what was just a plain, all one color, somewhat lackadaisical piece, and it now looks like a million bucks through the magic of powders. Okay, so now what? You put the powder on, it's great, baking. Polymer clay is not an air dry material. It has to be cured in the oven. It has to get to a certain temperature for all of the components to kind of fuse into their plastic. I don't think that's the correct scientific term for what happens, but for the sake of argument, let's just say it cures 
in the heat of the oven. And you can just use the home oven. It's below 300 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, so it's really easy to bake it at home, no problem. And if you're not sure how long or what temperature, check the clay that you have. Every polymer clay will have written on the package how long and how hot. But I will tell you this, please make sure you preheat the oven. Usually ovens have gremlins inside that like to spike temperatures up weirdly when you're not looking. So if you preheat it with an oven thermometer inside, then you can tell if the inside of your oven matches what you're supposed to have on the package. I'm using Primo clay, so the magic number is 275 degrees. So I make sure that my oven thermometer says 275 because the knobs are liars. You just can't even rely on those most of the time. I usually bake on a tile or a very stiff piece of paper, bake it for the recommended time, half an hour, 45 minutes, let it cool. It's fusing in the oven and it kind of hardens as it cools. And very thin bits of polymer clay have some flexibility to them. That's good. If it snaps in half, it wasn't hot enough or long enough. Although don't wander around trying to snap other people's polymer clay, they hate that. So bake it properly, then you can take a look at it and see what you have. You do not have to put any kind of a finishing coating on there. It's fine as it is, but because you've got powder on the surface and that can rub off over time if you want to use something like a, uh, the sealant from uh, the Swelligant line or one of the gla glazes or glosses that come with the polymer clay products that you buy, those are all compatible with polymer. Not everything is, so make sure you stick to ones that are compatible with polymer, which of course every clay makes its own. So then it's just ready to use in your jewelry project, add it to a mosaic that you're making, wire wrap it, do whatever crazy fun thing. You can even drill holes in it and rivet it to your metals. So have some fun with molds, polymer clay, and the magic world of pan pastel. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.